Hello everyone and welcome to Ovesen.net. Uh, it is uh, December now and as you can see I have a little bit of Christmas decoration. Soon Christmas is here. This video is about uh, DOS. So DOS Ember was uh, created by a group of uh, retro YouTubers uh, and uh, it's uh, similar to the Septandi where they focused uh, on Tandy machines in uh, September and now it is DOS in December. I have found an old uh, PC running DOS and uh, I thought I'll uh, Take a look at that. So I was invited to uh, to be a part of the Do December, and I haven't really done a lot of DOS or uh, PC related stuff uh, in my channel uh, before now. So this might be interesting. So if you want to check out the, the other YouTubers uh, that are participating in December, just uh, search YouTube for December. So what I got here is uh, actually a compact Presario. 7000T and uh, it's a so-called internet PC so <laughs> I think this was uh, sold around the 2000 and uh, yeah it's a Pentium 3 machine uh, with uh, 128 megabytes of RAM so not a lot compared to uh, today's standards. I bought this machine a long time ago for only uh, around $20 including uh, the LCD screen and uh, the LCD screen is <laughs> extremely yellowed uh, on the back side. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to do anything with that now. So what I got here uh, on the screen is uh, in fact the uh, Turbo Pascal uh, 7. And uh, the reason I have that one is because uh, I am a developer and uh, I actually uh, started my career by using uh, Turbo Pascal, and uh, it was uh, in the days of the DOS. Welcome to the Microsoft MS-DOS 5 upgrade training. This is the first time MS-DOS has been available as an upgrade. It's new. So what is actually MS-DOS? Well, if you're born in the 70s or 80s, you might have come across the operating system, but uh, for uh, the young people, they might have never heard about this. Uh, MS-DOS is an operating system for uh, the x86 base computers, and, uh, and uh, that actually means uh, PCs. And it is a command line interface and a single user operating system. MS-DOS was released in uh, 81, uh, but it actually started as uh, 86 DOS uh, owned by a Seattle computer products company, and it was written by Tim Patterson. It was basically a clone of a digital research CPM operating system for uh, set 80 based computers. Microsoft hired Tim Patterson in 81 and uh, bought the uh, 86DOS uh, 1.1 for uh, only $75,000. Uh, they kept the version number but they renamed it to MS-DOS. Later uh, it was licensed to IBM as PC-DOS for IBM PCs and uh, there were uh, different uh, OEM versions as well for uh, the operating system. Through the years, there were several uh, releases of uh, MS-DOS. Uh, the final standalone version was uh, 6.22, and the final release that was bundled with uh, Windows uh, was uh, 8.0 in uh, September 2000. So MS-DOS was a set of uh, command line commands uh, which you typed uh, onto a command line and uh, besides the commands uh, it contained also a API which uh, other programs could utilize and build upon. MS-DOS was uh, written in assembly language and uh, also some parts in C and if you're interested in looking at the original source code you can actually find it now on uh, GitHub because Microsoft uh, recently uh, freed uh, the original source code for the old MS-DOS version. 
So what is the position of MS-DOS now in 2020? Well, actually, you can find uh, some remains of it in uh, Windows. Uh, there is uh, something called the command prompt, which actually contains uh, most of the original commands from MS-DOS. Also, after Microsoft stopped the development of MS-DOS, uh, a free DOS clone was uh, developed, and uh, it has actually been maintained up until 2012, uh, I think. And you also got the DOS box, which is an emulator that recreates MS-DOS environment and you can use it with most games and it supports sound and graphics and some networking even. DOSBox runs on most operating systems like Windows, Mac and Linux. So this will be a little bit about programming. This machine actually runs Windows Millennium Edition, Windows ME, if you remember that version, it was, uh, I think, uh, maybe uh, the most buggy version of uh, Windows after uh, 3.11, <laughs> I guess. But before I do anything, I'm gonna actually uh, be a little bit authentic and uh, actually install DOS on this machine, so... Uh, that it is running on the bare metal and not uh, inside the windows like uh, I'm doing now. So this machine uh, has an uh, IDE connector for uh, hard drives and uh, I really had to dig around uh, in my attic to actually find uh, an old uh, hard drive with an IDE connector. <laughs> Because I don't want to format uh, the original hard drive of this machine. So I'm gonna start by uh, replacing the hard drive and then installing a DOS. Now this machine is so big that it barely fits uh, uh, on my desk. Uh, however, the inside of the machine is pretty empty. Also, I found uh, <laughs> some of my old uh, diskette boxes uh, that has a lot of stuff. So. Here I find MS-DOS 6.22, uh, 4 floppies, and here's even Windows uh, 3.1 backup. <laughs> so this is the inside of the machine, and as you can see there's a lot of room for expansion. So what I'm going to do now is to disconnect the old uh, hard drive and uh, hook up the new one. So it's been a while since I messed around with uh, IDE hard drives and uh, <laughs> yeah I remember that it was a little bit more complicated back in the day you had to concern yourselves with uh, uh, setting up the BIOS manually with uh, sectors and cylinders and stuff like that's the master slave so this is the old uh, 124 gigabyte drive that's uh, been lying around unused for uh, at least 10 years. So I guess it's just uh, hook it up and then start the machine. I just uh, lie it uh, down like that. Uh, it's just temporary anyway. So even though this is a 20 year old uh, machine, I think it's uh, modern enough to uh, Detect the hard drives uh, automatically. Alright, looks like it found the configuration of the disks, so that seems to be correct. I know it says operating system not found, which is also correct, so. Uh, because this disk is uh, probably formatted as NTFS and, uh, and I don't think it, it has a boot sector. So uh, yeah, let's try to format it then. So it's been a long time since I actually used a PC floppy drive. So let's see if it can boot from uh, this MS-DOS installation disk. Starting MS-DOS, so hopefully these floppies uh, are still okay, I think they're at least 30 years old, so I'm just gonna 
run through the installation and see if we can actually format this uh, disk. Uh, remove files and reconfigure hard disk. Yes. All files will be deleted, that's okay. So now it booted and then it started to format the disk. This is actually quite uh, quick, I remember it to be <laughs> a lot slower than this. So now the floppy swapping starts. Oops, there seems to be an error on this floppy number two. So I took that floppy and uh, I turned it around a couple of times with my finger and then blew into the plastic and now it seems to be <laughs> reading. Number four. Another error. <laughs> Try again. So I finally managed to uh, read the disk again and install the whole thing. Alright, so now it's booting from MS DOS. So that was it. Back in the day when you booted MS-DOS, uh, you were presented with this C colon backslash. <laughs> and actually it uh, said to run MemMaker. So we'll do that. To optimize the memory express setup. All right, let's see what uh, the mem command uh, says. So DOS with extended memory seems to be able to just utilize uh, 64 megabyte and this uh, machine has 128 megabytes. But the largest program size is only 569K. So let's see the disk. The disk is formatted as FAT32 and as you can see it is only a 2 gigabyte uh, partition now even though the disk is 124 gigabyte I think it can only utilize uh, 2 gigs uh, maximum. So now I'm gonna install uh, Check It which is a DOS program for PC diagnostics. In those days you used a program called PKUnzip which uh, was uh, provided on the floppy disks and uh, yeah unpack to see check it There you go. It even has my name. <laughs> so here you can do different uh, types of tests and benchmarks. So let's see uh, main system benchmark. This was probably made uh, many years before this machine and thus it is uh, for older 386 or uh, 486 uh, CPUs. So here's the rating, it is uh, 43,696 times uh, an IBM PC XT. For the mat speed and the CPU speed is 1500 times uh, PC XT. Alright, so that was a quick uh, <laughs> machine up and running with uh, DOS. And uh, 
Yeah, what I'm gonna do now is to install uh, Turbo Pascal and the reason for uh, that is uh, because uh, I went to engineering college in uh, 1990 to 93 and um, yeah, in those days uh, we had PCs with MS-DOS of course and uh, <laughs> I had an Amiga at that time, an Amiga 500 so uh, that was actually the, the beginning of uh, me using uh, uh, PCs actually and DOS so that was all new to me and uh, the programming language we used at the college was in fact the Turbo Pascal for uh, DOS so it is incredibly noisy this uh, machine <laughs> the fan spins and uh, it's uh, very loud all right time to install uh, Turbo Pascal and I have it here on three floppy disks and uh, it says install so this is version 7. There is of course uh, newer versions uh, for Windows. So to install it's uh, just a matter of typing install. Press enter to continue. Install on a hard drive. Yes, that is what I want. So it is going to be installed on the C drive slash TP. So Borland Turbo Pascal was uh, later known as uh, Borland Delphi, and uh, I think you, uh, I think Borland Delphi is uh, still available as a software development uh, IDE, and uh, I think it now uses uh, .NET. All right, that was it. Seems to be completed now. Uh, no read errors. So now I have booted it again just to get the updated parts into the auto exec bot. So let's see if that actually is uh, in the file. So auto exec bot it's, is the batch file that is actually executed when you boot uh, into DOS. And it has a set of commands. Um, and also you have something called config sys, uh, which is a system file for setting up uh, drivers and things like that. So uh, the installation said that we should add uh, the installation part for uh, Turbo Pascal to the part. So I was thinking it maybe did that. Uh, itself but uh, apparently not so uh, tp bin then boot again so i remember back in the day uh, when i had a pc uh, tweaking the config sys and the auto exit bot files was uh, <laughs> a constant uh, a task which you did uh, to get as much uh, available memory as possible. So now we should be able to run uh, Turbo Pascal and uh, before I do that I'm gonna make a directory, call it code and go into that and then it, if I remember correctly it was uh, the command turbo. Yeah look at that! <laughs> So this is the Turbo Pascal code editor and uh, here you can write the Pascal code which you then can uh, compile and run as a DOS program. So uh, I think there are some example codes. So uh, let me start by opening uh, uh, something here. Um, examples qsort <laughs> let's try that one so this is actually pascal which is uh, quite an old uh, programming language and uh, yeah as i said i learned to program this at the engineering college and uh, after that uh, we uh, went over to use uh, c and c plus plus 
But nowadays, as a programmer and a software developer, I use uh, Microsoft.net and C Sharp. So let's see if we can run this one. Okay, division by zero. <laughs> so I found another program called uh, CRT Demo. Let's see if I can com compile that one. Yeah, and then a run. <laughs> Division by zero on that one too. Strange. It's a little bit uh, hard to use uh, Turbo Pascal without the mouse because uh, there are no mouse drivers installed. And uh, I'm gonna try to remember how to uh, install a mouse driver. Actually, I uh, found a floppy with some uh, mouse drivers on, I think. Just gonna copy that. If, if I can type. So now I just uh, ran the MSC mouse program. Let's see if uh, that actually uh, made a difference. Yeah, <laughs> actually there is, uh, now the mouse works. Fantastic. But that is only until you uh, boot the machine. So uh, let me try and add the mouse driver to config sys. Load the driver like this. MSC mouse dot sys, I think it was. <laughs> then try to boot. It looks like it actually loaded the demo driver. Excellent. Now I can uh, type turbo again. Yeah, nice. And you can uh, right click. Now the scroll wheel does not work, but you can uh, you can drag uh, the scroll bar by holding down the left mouse button. So it seems like uh, whatever kind of uh, program I try to uh, run after compiling it, I get a runtime error 200. That is a division by zero error in fact, and uh, <laughs> that's a little bit strange. Um, so I Google uh, a little bit and uh, <laughs> in fact this machine is too fast for Turbo Pascal. There is a CRT library that is used uh, by most of these uh, example programs and uh, that has a delay routine that is actually uh, trying to divide some uh, number to uh, calculate some uh, delay and uh, from uh, Pentium processors and upwards uh, this actually fails because uh, those are too fast. But there is no problem without a solution and in fact I found a little uh, program that I downloaded and I actually copied to uh, a floppy using uh, another machine and uh, this uh, external floppy drive that is uh, a USB based floppy. So what uh, this little program does is to patch uh, the Turbo Pascal installation so that it uh, works again. So let's look at the docs before uh, trying this. Well, <laughs> that was in German, so uh, I have uh, learned uh, German before, but uh, I can't read it anymore. I forgot all about it. So I'm just gonna run the... Oh, there's an English doc. <laughs> okay. I just noticed TP patch ENG. So this just explains the the fault and uh, yeah. So I was thinking that it did actually patch uh, the Turbo Pascal, but uh, it's not. It is actually patching the exe file that you compile. So. Uh, So 
So for example, this uh, RT exec can be patched. Okay, it says it's okay, so let's test. All right, so there's no um, device driver file for uh, EGA and VGA. I actually found uh, one of my old uh, program floppies from back in the day, and here's a lot of uh, things that I have made myself. So. Uh, So this seemed to be uh, some uh, assignment I did, and this is the actual uh, reply to that assignment. It seems to compile just fine. If you want to go out from the editor to DOS shell, you can just go to DOS shell like that. So I'm going to compile it with a command line. There you go. There's the exe file and then I can... Uh... Okay. There you go. So let's see what this looks like. <laughs> so this is supposed to convert a number to... Uh... An ASCII character, I think. Yeah, 86 is V. Here's another program I wrote. Sinus. Alright. <laughs> it was my name uh, scrolling over the screen in a sinus waveform. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I can draw with uh, cursor keys. <laughs> What about OBL3 then? Alright! <laughs> yeah, I remember this. I actually used to uh, make this menu system when I saw the programming assignments. So this was in fact the beginning of my career as a programmer and now I am programming um, health record solutions. Alright, so I'm not gonna hold a course in uh, Pascal programming. I have forgotten most of it, but uh, let's make a small little one program here and uh, <laughs> yeah not very impressive but uh, should write hello December and to see the output you can uh, you can select the output from the debug menu then you will see the output from the program so uh, let's uh, select run Hello, dos sember. <laughs> and now we can exit and uh, yeah, save this. And now we have a dos sember exe. Wow, impressive program. <laughs> All right, that was enough with uh, my history of uh, programming and uh, Turbo Pascal. I know uh, I was thinking about uh, trying to run uh, some game, but um, then I need some uh, sound, of course. And I'm, uh, I'm gambling that uh, there is some kind of Zone Blaster uh, card or compatible Zone card in this machine. I haven't really checked, but uh, I found the drivers for. Uh, so I am gonna try and install them. So it seems it did not detect anything. So uh, yeah, seems to be uh, not a compatible. Uh, audio card in this machine so i found another set of drivers this should be to uh, plug and play soul cards so let's try that all right that was installed actually so 
So it looks like the driver uh, actually started, but if it is working, that remains to be seen. So let me see what I got on this floppy. This is actually a demo of the very popular game, The Secret of Monkey Island. And here you see the requirements, 512k RAM, mouse, joystick, keyboard. This was a, uh, supposed to be a playable demo that I uh, just downloaded now. The reason I found this was because this was a game I played a lot back in the day on the PC. But there's no sound, it's supposed to be uh, music on the intro. <laughs> None shall pass. So this is an adventure game where you explore uh, this pirate world and uh, yeah. Let's open this door. So since I wasn't really sure what kind of sound card uh, is in this machine, I actually opened it and took it out and uh, it is in fact a Sound Blaster Live PCI card. So this is a CT4830 and uh, yeah, that should make it easier to find the drivers if uh, at all possible for DOS. So I have Google a bit and found this download, Sound Blast uh, Live PCI DOS driver, so trying that. So the readme file actually states that uh, this is an installation for getting the Sound Blast Live working with MS-DOS 6.22. Alright, so I downloaded the Sound Blast Live drivers for uh, DOS and uh, I have installed it and uh, instructions said to to edit the ct syn dot ini file so that it uh, reflects uh, the correct uh, installation path for this wave set uh, parameter i already did that so and also it came with an example um, auto exec but file so uh, so you need to edit that so I already did that as well so I added uh, these uh, four lines at the top here and this sets uh, some environment variables for the Sound Blaster drivers and um, then it runs this uh, speinit.com so uh, let's try and see if uh, if it loads so I just press Control alt delete Yes, it seems to load SP16 emulation driver. <laughs> so let's test if this driver actually works. And I have uh, downloaded a very popular game that is always tested on all kinds of <laughs> computers. And uh, it is, uh, of course, Doom. And I have the installation here. I'm going to run the installer now. Yes, I want to drive C and I want to install it into Dooms. And uh, controller, I don't have a joystick, so I have keyboard and mouse. And the Zone Blaster is already pre selected. Select that. And these are the configuration for the Sound Blaster and uh, it was 220 and uh, Sound FX device is also Sound Blaster at 220 IRQ5 and DMA1 
save and launch Doom. Okay, <laughs> there is sound. Fantastic. So let's try a little game. Oh, it's really been a long time since I uh, played the Doom, so... Uh, <laughs> Some gear? some enemy all right come on come on <laughs> First level cleared. Well, that was easy. So that was a little bit of gaming from the early 90s. So the beginning of the 90s was actually when Windows arrived and uh, yeah, this is uh, a video about DOS, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to uh, install Windows just to relive that experience and I actually got uh, Windows here on uh, it's Windows 3.1 and it is on 6 floppies so if these 6 floppies uh, work then we might be lucky to install Windows 3.1 <laughs> To set the windows now, press enter. I think I'll use the express setup. So there you go, windows. So now I can send in the registration and then I will get a free Windows newsletter. <laughs> Great! Alright, Windows was successfully installed and uh, now we just reboot. So. So how did you start Windows? Was it the, the win command? Yes it was. 
amazing. I still remember those uh, details. And it started really quickly. Let's try Minesweeper. I have to try Minesweeper. All right, good start. Oh no. <laughs> All right, that was it for uh, this video, uh, December. So this was a little trip uh, down the memory lane to the beginning of the 90s and what I was doing at that time. So uh, this was really fun. I haven't really touched uh, DOS or uh, yeah, those kinds of uh, things in many years. So uh, this was really exciting for me. So maybe I'll do some more uh, DOS related content in uh, the time to come, we'll see. So I just want to say thank you to the uh, retro YouTubers community that came up with this uh, December idea and uh, let me participate. And if you want to see uh, the videos of uh, some of the other participating YouTubers, just like check out uh, the links in my description below and you'll find a lot of contents there. And also just search for uh, December on YouTube and you'll find more videos. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks, bye bye.